saturation region. This is different than uh, in the case of uh, BJT. Uh, this one we call the saturation. This one is called active. So here's the way it works. If you are less than, oh, I should have maybe shifted this curve over a little bit. Okay. If you are less than a particular VGS, so if VGS, that's how hard am I pushing on this gate with a voltage. So this here is VGS. If VGS exceeds what we call a threshold, I'll call it V sub TH, or it might just be V sub little t, then this thing turns on. Okay, it turns on nice and hard. <laughs> <laughs> I always feel that way when I'm watching curling and they're yelling very hard. <laughs> All right, so once you see this, this is like a turn on voltage. It almost, you can think of it conceptually. So, okay, this is important, guys. Um, conceptually, you can think of it like that 0 0.7 volts you need to turn on a diode. It is not physically like that. You can think of it like that if that makes your life easier. You must exceed a given threshold or a given, yeah, a given threshold voltage for this thing to turn on. Okay, this will be given to you. This is a design thing that can be played with. This will be given to you on the exam. So what you do is you, you create a new voltage that you call it overdrive voltage. So how much over of this threshold is it? So that overdrive voltage is equal to VGS uh, minus V. TH. So until this number becomes positive, this thing's off, okay? And then you end up going up this curve that looks proportional to uh, VGS squared. So it's proportional to that. Okay, so once this thing is on, right, so I put VGS high enough that it's on. Now my VGS determines the current going through it. So this thing is on. And let's say that we're at zero volts. I'm going to get no current. So I'm at zero volts between here and here. I'm going to get no current, right? As I increase this and increase this and increase this, I'm going to move from this region where the current going through is increased, and then it ends up saturating. I won't get any more current going through here. So you can think about this as a pipe with a finite width, right? If I start pouring water in the top, it's all going to go through. If I start pouring more and more and more water, I start pushing hard, I increase the pressure, more water is going to go through. But I'm going to reach a point eventually where I keep putting more water on top and it'll just keep building up, right? There's only a certain flow rate that's going to go through this thing. And that's sort of the way that you can picture this. Here's a little bit of water going through, it just falls straight through. Uh, but eventually I, I'm trying to put more water than it can handle, so it, it saturates. There's no more to go through that pipe. The pipe is full. The only way I can increase the size of that pipe is by uh, increasing that VGS voltage, that overdrive voltage. The more I turn on the voltage, the bigger my pipe gets, the more current can go through. There's a good way to picture it if you want to picture it like that. So there's two different equations for the mode of operation here. So the, the region over here, I'll call this region 1 and I'll call this one region 2. Okay, region 1, this is called the triode region. IDS, I'm going to explain what these uh, are here. We have drawn out the geometry in a minute. So that current going through here equals mu n, which is the mobility of an electron, times the capacitance of your oxide, times the width of your transistor divided by the length. I'll explain the stuff in a minute here. And your VGS minus VT, so that's your overdrive voltage squared minus, uh, this thing is all the brackets here. 
1 over BDS 1 half BDS squared. That's sort of the less, the less, the lesser of the two important equations here. The second one is the mode that we'd like to use it in. Like we use the BJT in this mode over here. We always assume that the voltage is big enough that we're going to be in this mode. Pretty much we're going to be doing this over here for this course as well. This here, IDS. And both of these equations will be given to you, so don't panic about having to try and memorize this. Equals one half the mobility of an electron, the capacitance of the oxide, the width of the transistor divided by the length, and then this overdrive voltage, uh, VGS. BTS minus BT squared. Okay, uh, I just want to make a, a last comment. I'll let you guys go for the night. It's 10 o'clock. We've done some good work here. And then we'll finish up MOSFETs tomorrow with a couple examples. Um, all of these design parameters are what people are spending literally billions of dollars trying to improve to make your chips go faster. The mobility of an electron is dependent on how pure your silicon is. Other semiconductors have better mobilities. Graphene is the new hot thing that's like one individual sheet of carbon atoms in a graphite, in a graphite configuration. It has a huge mobility, so they're trying to make transistors out of that. Capacitance of the oxide is a thing called high-K gate, gate dielectrics, um, which use these crazy chemical configurations to improve that. Again, billions of dollars of research. Width over length. Width is, width is the one that as a designer, you can make this as wide as you want, just given how big your chip is. The length, this is when you talk about uh, 45 nanometers, 45 nanometer technology, or you talk about, I think the next one after that is 33 nanometer technology. 32. 32. <laughs> Sorry, it was 180 when I was working on this stuff. <laughs> yeah, that was like the best that we could get our hands on at the time. Uh, so old. Uh, yeah, I know. I'm like I'm 31. Wow. Uh, so again, billions of dollars trying to reduce that. So these are the parameters that we have to play with in a MOSFET. So we'll talk tomorrow about two things: how to use this like a BJT and how to use it like logic.